Software pervades our lives more and more. Large software systems rule uh, all finance, our transportation systems. The complexity of these systems keeps increasing. Software is now not just in you know, military jets, but it's all over. It's in our smartphone, it's in our car. Something like 10 million lines of code uh, on the Chevy Volt, and uh, there were 8 million lines of code on the Boeing 787. More and more devices carry some safety critical functionality. We're uh, depending at every turn on uh, software, and increasingly we have to uh, look in the direction of making software reliable. Ada is becoming more relevant than ever, I would say, because we're now putting more and more intelligence into our software. We're now expecting it to do things that it, we used to rely on a human to do. There was a, an aim in the Ada design to not guarantee safety or, or reliability of software, but to provide all the tools that a language can provide uh, to assist in that. How can you do things better? How can you do things safer? If you can make software a part of the solution instead of a part of the problem, uh, that's a start. Most programming languages have some built-in evolution mechanism. Ada has a very formal model in place with a uh, language design team. We've um, you know, incorporated the best uh, understandings of research and in programming technology and language. I think one of the things that makes Ada 2012 uh, really interesting to new programmers is that it combines the advanced features that you might think of only appear in languages uh, such as C++ and so on with an overriding interest in producing correct programs, safe programs, secure programs. Ada 2012 has a strong emphasis on um, ad additions to the language that allow the programmer to say this piece of code should do this and if it doesn't, something is wrong. The big thing is this notion of contracts, uh, the ability to specify the preconditions, postconditions, invariants, and so on. If you have a clear statement of what the program does, then you're in a position to use mathematical tools to show that the uh, program is doing what it should. Everybody is talking about static analysis, about testing, about verification, even about formal proof. And that's new. I think some of the strengths of ADA have emerged, particularly in the security framework, where safety, to some extent, you can test to see if a system is safe by trying various different modes. Security, you almost have to prove that it's secure. You can't as easily test that something is secure. And that typically involves mathematical proof, and that really requires that the language be very well defined. You'd indicate some kind of convergence of uh, formal methods and conventional programming. Uh, which is much more flexible than what was available so far. It's clear in, in some programming languages you can spend 80, 90 percent of your time after you've written the program, after you've designed it, just trying to get it to work properly because of all of the hidden errors. In Ada, that, that amount of time shrinks dramatically. The case can be made that even if uh, the initial design of a system takes a little bit longer, uh, if the system is reliable, uh, the financial uh, advantages are obvious. And now, uh, with this additional ADA 2012 uh, contract-based features, you can also uh, dramatically shrink some of the test phases because the testing is essentially built in to the language itself, and that's uh, really a unique capability which should uh, and could dramatically reduce the cost of test and debug. Uh, the uh, issue of multi-cores is likely to become more and more important. There is already a huge amount of research being poured into the area. Multi-cores are the new architectures uh, where uh, a single silicon chip contains not one uh, processing unit, but uh, 2, 4, 8, 16. I just read about one that is up to 64 different processing units. The proper way of programming those things to get uh, efficient use of all this hardware is still uh, somewhat an open-ended research problem. And uh, we think that what uh, ADA 2012 has done in that direction is an excellent first step. It's inefficient to just let all the tasks roam across all the processes. We can do that, but it's inefficient. So you need ways of saying these tasks should execute on these processes, these tasks should execute on these processes. And that's an example of one of the many new features in ADA 2012 gives control over that. So. You know, it's a language for the future in that respect. There's a bunch of little features here and there, little enhancement that makes things much more easy. Uh, you have enhancement on access type, enhancement on containers, iterators. And These new features will make it easier to generate reliable software in all sorts of ways. You have all of the flexibility and power that you could ever want 
terms of full object-oriented programming with multiple inheritance. You've got uh, interfaces for synchronizing, multi-threading, and so on. All of this really great power. And then you've got this capability of specifying what you want the program to do and having the compiler and the tools and so on actually verify that it does what it's supposed to do. And that's really a nice feeling where, where not only can you say, I've, I've used all these great new features and I've got all this power and I can do these amazing things, and I can prove to myself and to my boss and to the world that this actually does the right thing. It's not just that it does cool stuff. Uh, and, and, and this could be used to control the commercial avionics, control some anti-lock braking system, control some you know, space vehicle, and I wouldn't be up all night worrying about it because I know it's safe, I know it's secure, and that's a pretty, that's a pretty cool feeling.